here you're ready for your dose of reality. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dr. Quack Podcast. I'm Dr. Quack. And I'm the important one, Mr. Mayhem. I'm the lead detective on this story here because today we're finally be able to bring you the cold case about Coco Beware. We're taking a look and see if this man truly deserves to be a member of the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, we're not talking about Cauliflower Alley, we're not talking about the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, this is specifically rated to the World Wrestling Entertainment. Yeah, in this episode we're going to take a look at his career, what he has done, and try to make the determination, does he belong? Uh, I want to start with this here because I want to tell you what he was known as, okay? Originally his career started out as Coco Ware, and then he became Sweet Brown Sugar, and Stagger Lee, and then leading up to Coco Beware. Yes, he was doing Sweet Brown Sugar. Uh, he originally was teaming with beautiful Bobby Eaton and Norval Austin, and he turned heel and thought he would be called himself Sweet Brown Sugar. Uh, his feud with Bobby Eaton led to a Loser Leave Town match where he pulled the Dusty Rhodes and lost the match and came out under a mask, instead of calling himself the Midnight Rider, he was Stagger Lee. Yes, he, he did that and his mask eventually came off and they found out who he was. Yes, but he had, he had gotten popular again, he was even teaming with Bobby Eaton, then the mask fell off and it was an immediate heel turn, so... Eh? Yeah, I mean... That one I'm not going to hold against him because that somebody in the back thought that was a good idea. Yep, he does have a uh, championship reign singles-wise, mid-American heavyweight title. He has several, several titles on the independent circuit. Um, one of the hardest things, hardest things we're going to criticize him on is he has absolutely zero World Wrestling Federation or World Championship Wrestling title wins at all. None. Not a tag team title, not an intercontinental title, not a king of the ring. Nothing. None of that. And, you know, it, it's weird. Like, the big thing to his credit, probably in the WWF era, was that he made a music video. Well, yes. The Originally, uh, World Wrestling Federation, they came out with a, a wrestling-themed uh, CD that had songs in there. The, the Real American that originally was for Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda became Hulk Hogan's theme. Mm -hmm. Um... The Go Go Messing with the Country Boy was on there. Uh, uh, Jimmy Hart, Eat Your Heart Out, Rick Springfield. Um, and then they came out, and the first one was so successful, they came out with the second one that was called Pile Driver. And Coco Beware got to do the lead song on that, the, the, the title track, Pile Driver. Yeah, I mean, it was a good hit. You had a lot of the wrestlers involved in the video. Yeah, that was, that was the... Land of a Thousand Dances, I think, was that their second uh, compilation song that they did, where it was everybody got together. I think that's what it was called, was Land of a Thousand Dances. Yeah, I mean, and that part right there is really the positive on his career, because there's a lot of negative here. Yeah. I um, mean, yeah, go yeah. ahead. I was going to say, um, the, the, what he's remembered for most in World Wrestling Federation is coming to the ring as the Birdman, Coco Beware. And he actually, when he was Coco Ware in the independent circuit, used to come out to a song called The Birdman. And he would make the flapping motion. Well, somebody thought that was a good idea at World Wrestling Federation and actually gave him a bird and had him come down to the ring as The Birdman, Coco Beware. But that's basically the, the last really positive note that everybody remembered for. If you ask somebody what was a great Coco Beware match, you're going to get a lot of... 
Yeah, you're going to get two numbers really out of this. The first one is zero, and that is going to his WrestleMania record. That is how many wins he actually had. Throughout WrestleMania, he is 0 and 4. And, and especially him, we both joke, but he's done it at great length. Um, Virgil is 2 and 0. Oh. Yeah, Virgil's undefeated at WrestleMania. Just think about that in comparison. So is Michael Cole. Yeah. I mean, yes, numbers don't tell the whole story, but when you are the first one to take the tombstone, the perfect plex, and the first loss on Raw, the very first debut Raw to Yokozuna, he, he was what they know in wrestling term, which this is going to be an old term, so this is going to be a kayfabe word of the day as well, the carpenter. You've heard of mechanics. Mechanics are people who every move is perfect. Every move is flawless, but they usually have no personality. That's what the IC title was invented for. And then you have this term today, the carpenter. The carpenter, also known as the journeyman. They're not really world title status. They show up. They work hard. You can count on them to be there. That's a carpenter. And that's what Coco Beware was known for. Cafe word of the day, carpenter. The average journeyman wrestler. I mean, honestly, this is my opinion. If you did not have Frankie in his corner, if you did not have his bird, would he really have been remembered? Because other wrestlers during that time, Jake Roberts, Ricky Steamboat, the Bulldogs, all had animals in their corner. Yes, you remember that animal, but you also remember the work of that wrestler. Coco Beware was a jobber to the stars. He was a jobber to the stars. He was, he was like I said, he was a carpenter because he won some matches. They put him in some, some programs. He wasn't a Barry Horowitz. Or a, he wasn't Johnny Rods, but Johnny Rods is in the Hall of Fame, and I think he deserves that for all the students he trained and got up there. Very fair point. Very, very, very true, because we're talking about the totality of the work here of Coco Beware, not just what he did in the World Wrestling Federation. And Johnny Rods put together a litany of big names that are now Hall of Famers, world title holders, Intercontinental tag champs, remembered names. So Johnny Rods, though his wrestling career wasn't stellar, what he did for wrestling was stellar. And Coco Beware just doesn't have that. Yeah, I mean it's just very minimal. I mean another highlight of his career, if you want to call it that, was high energy with Owen Hart. Um, really, that that was Owen Hart's plateau to go single because it definitely showed that you know they they didn't look that great as a team. No, and. Their, their moves, while they were supposed to be flashy, high energy, they, did, they didn't have that same chemistry. Coco Beware was not known as a high flyer, although he was five foot six, 210 pounds. He was not really a high flyer. He had a really great drop kick, but again, a move, one thing doesn't make you a Hall of Famer. Uh, Owen Hart was much flashier, much more high flying, and they, their styles just didn't work in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, just overall, I, I think we have definitely, you know, looked at all the evidence here. Yep, I mean, I, I, I'll do one more. 0-4, but when Bobby Heenan holds a pinfall victory over you at WrestleMania, that's how much the WWF thought of you. Yeah, that, that truly explains it. Yeah, that's my opinion. I believe that he should be discredited from yes. the WWE Hall of Fame. And, and, and I'm going to bring it up here. I'm sorry I don't normally use electronic notes here, but it was the easiest way to remember it. There was a discussion after he won the title, was uh, nominated into the Hall of Fame, which, by the way, he entered the class of 2009. Right. Several decades almost there. You know, about two yes. decades. But 2009, by that time... Randy Savage was not a member of the Hall of Fame. Bruno San Martino was not a member of the Hall of Fame. Uh, Ivan Koloff, who we've already brought up, still is not in and should be in. Yeah, Rick Rube was not a member of the Hall of Fame at that point. Yes, and there was two guys from a, a, a story writers called 411 Mania, and they discussed it. The writers' names were Stephen Cook and Kevin Pantoja, and they said that it was an embarrassment that he was in, that he got in before guys like Owen or uh, Ivan Koloff and guys like Randy Savage and Bruno San Martino. And they discussed it later in 2020, and Pantoja described Coco Beware as the floor of the inductees. 
It, it really is. And and God, I, that's that's why I'm going with he should be t discredited from the WWE Hall of Fame. I, I would have to agree he's not a member of the World Wrestling, or he's not a member of the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, Cauliflower Alley remembers him well, and he is a paying member, but he is not a recognized Hall of Famer as far as the Cauliflower Alley Club is concerned. He's a great wrestler, and he deserves to be remembered for his place in history, but the World Wrestling Entertainment Hall of Fame is not that place. Yes. So, there you go, folks. There is our opinions so, here. What is, what is the rating on Coco Beware? One, two, three. <laughs> Sorry, Coco Beware. To, to these two guys who, by the way, we're not Hall of Famers either, but we do have a mind for wrestling, and we say no on you. Yeah, you tell us your opinion. Are we right or are we wrong? Because we definitely want to know this from you guys. But also, coming up on our next cold case will be this right here. Yeah, the research we're going to have to do on this one, and it's going to be more than just the, the, the work that she did on her back. We have to find out what she actually contributed to wrestling. Yeah, and for that, I'm your host, Dr. Quack. And I'm the lead investigator, the important one, Mr. Mayhem. Check us out. We've got a lot of videos coming out. We've got a lot of things going on. More than just Cold Case, we got WrestleMania. We've got the Champion That Never Was tournament. Check us out. And I'm out.